Hello there, I'm Black Bright, and in an earlier video I told you that I was going to let you know about an experience of a lady who was coming, who was visiting the UK and the, the trauma she went through, through the immigration process. I'm telling you because it could happen to anyone. Um, she was, she'd been in the country before, I think she was here on a sponsorship and she got a visa to do, a, not a sponsorship, a scholarship. So she came over here, attended university. I think she overstayed six days when she was here. But anyway, um, six days is neither here nor there normally because you're allowed to overstay up to 14 days these days. But anyway, she overstayed six days, went back, and that was a little while ago. So she came, she wanted to come back to visit her, her grandmother, I think, who lives in the UK. So she's all, she's got everything with her, passports, all her documents, because apparently she says she travels so much, she likes to carry all her documents with her. So she's coming through, um, well, trying to come through Heathrow, and they stop her and they ask her about when she last came to the UK. So apparently she says, um, she was, you know, like, if, if, if you don't know that someone's going to ask you that, you're not really going to remember the exact date when you last came, when you last visited the UK. Well, you know, if you're going back and forth or whatever, it's not going to be something that's going to be in the fore, foremost of your mind. Because normally you can, they can see it on the passport and they can tell when you last came in. Anyway, they asked her that question and she was kind of saying, oh, I think it's June, I think it's July. Anyway, because she got it wrong, they put it in, they detained her in a room. Apparently the room was freezing and she didn't have her jacket on. She asked for a jacket, they refused to get her jacket out of her suitcase and she was in that room freezing. Apparently she was, she was detained for 26 hours in total. Anyway, putting that aside, right? So apparently they then asked her um, who she was staying with. Um, she showed them the invitation letter. Um, apparently the invitation letter wasn't enough. They wanted to see her bank account. She couldn't, her bank statements. She couldn't, um, she didn't bring her bank statements, of course, because she wouldn't think that you would need your bank statements. Anyway, they asked her for her bank statements and she wanted to, she, she, she has um, online banking. So then she wanted to look, pull it up on her app, but there was no um, Wi-Fi in that place where she was so she couldn't pull it up anyway they carted her off i mean the woman was in tears i mean you've got to see her video i should have taken down her name actually but i didn't but you know the reason why i'm telling you is because the the, the immigration system if you are not um a british citizen coming into the uk is horrendous this, pop, this is not going to affect white people, of course, the majority of white people. It's going to affect black people, foreign nationals. So I'm just put, making it straight. She didn't want to say that that was the reason, but she said that everybody that was in that room was the same colour as her. So I'm not put, she's not pulling the race card. But all I'm saying to you now is that for people who are visiting the UK, I'm just going to tell you what you need to do in order to prevent problems as much as possible. The first thing is um, make sure your phone is charged and working. It Make sure you download your banking app, your, um, yeah, your banking app. Yeah, it's called a banking app, yeah. The bank you, the, the, the institution you bank with. Make sure that's on your phone. You know the password. You know how to access it so you can show them your statements if they ask you. These are the kind of things you're not even going to think about, right? Make sure, um, oh yeah, that will also show them how much money you have. Apparently she had £600 on her. And she had 1,000 in the bank account that she showed them. She had another one, but she only showed them one. But they said that wasn't enough. And she was only staying for 30 days. So um, that was another thing. Um, 
make sure of course you have a warm coat if they detain you and they're going to put you in one of those rooms actually when you come to england you're going to need a warm coat anyway even if you know because what happens if you're coming from a hot country you tend to leave in the way that that in in the in the what do you call it anyway whatever the weather's in that country that you're leaving that's how you tend to leave you're, if you're in a hot country you're not going to have a jacket and a coat but in England, you don't know what the weather's like. So make sure you have a j jacket or a coat and it's accessible. So if they take you off somewhere, you can put it on. Um, don't rely on your memory. Before you get on the plane and be or before you get off, whichever is which, make sure you remember when you last came to the UK, if you've been here before. It's important you know where you've been you need to remember where you've been so make sure you try to record that in your brain i'm not very good at things like that i'm i'm you know if i travel now i'm definitely gonna have a look at my passport to see when last i went to jamaica or when because i would only know roughly sometimes i say oh it's five years and you don't realize how time flies and it could have been seven or eight years then they're gonna think you're lying or they think you're going to you're hiding something, they say it's misrepresenting and all kinds of stuff. So you've got to be so careful. Um, she said, be wary of emails because she was going to start a business um, with makeup and she planned to do it next year. She said somebody sent her an email asking, saying that they bought some stuff from her company and could she... Um, Give them some more information it was set up they were trying to find out if she was trading so you've got to be very careful about the emails you receive and what they say and look at you know the source i mean even things like that you wouldn't think about i mean if you're not a business person it's not going to affect you but like her you know she she was she did get emails um if you're foreign national make sure you haven't access oh that's another thing you know, what had happened was when she came over while she was on that scholarship, she got ill. She went um, to the GP and um, she didn't pay for the prescription. Now, she would have paid for the prescription, but, you know, whatever she did, I don't know if she went to the hospital or whatever it was. Anyway, she didn't pay that fee that you're supposed to pay to the NHS because as far as she was concerned, she was on a scholarship. She's entitled but apparently they were making out like she wasn't and then they had an issue because she didn't pay the nhs because when visitors come to the country they're not allowed to access nhs they've got to pay for it unless you pay that thousand pound whatever um health surcharge or whatever it is it can't you know i hear different amounts one minute it's 200 next one it's a thousand i have no idea um make sure you have authentic id that's another thing Oh, and guess what happened to her? When they stopped her in, in the UK, they took her passport. Now, she had a Namibian passport. She was from Namibia. And apparently there's problems with Namibia. Probably that's why she experienced so much problems. But it doesn't mean that just because she's from Namibia, it doesn't mean that if you're from another part of the world, you're not going to be stopped and you're not going to be harassed. So it's good to be clued up in advance. Anyway, they took her passports, both her passports, the Namibian one and the, um, and, but she didn't have a UK passport. So no, they must have just taken a Namibia passport. And they said that they were going to, they were going to give it to the, um, the flight attendant. And then when she got on the other side, they would then make sure she got it back. Anyway, when she reached, when she reaches Namibia, they're telling her they've lost her passport. The woman broke down. I mean, this is like a year later and she's every time she remembers it or recalls that incident, she is crying. They detained her. They treated her like a criminal. I think after about four hours, they found the passport. I don't know if it was a case of, you know, the Home Office not getting in touch with the right person or whatever happened. But the, can you imagine the ordeal? So another thing I would suggest is that you photocopy your documentations before you leave, just so you've got copies somewhere. So if you do have to um, apply, you've got all the information to show that you were legitimate before you left the country. I don't know what's going on. All I know is that 
it's not nice for a lot of people um, especially if you're a foreign national trying to come into the UK in these times it's very very difficult they're quick to let you leave oh yeah they let you jump on that plane quick enough but try to come back you're gonna have hell for a lot of people not everyone you might be one of those lucky ones that get through but nothing is guaranteed um, yeah like I said British citizens you can't take it for granted you know like I um, spoke to you in a different video somebody the border force person took away somebody's passport and said they shouldn't have had it in the first place and shipped them back and one th another thing with that um, that girl apparently they made her miss her flight and she had a return ticket and they tried to say that she wasn't allowed back in the country because the government had to pay for her ticket and she said but that wasn't true because she had a return ticket so they could have cashed that in and just readjusted it so they were even um circumventing the truth so it's it's not pretty um she ended up paying three thousand five hundred she still hasn't got um a visa to come back into the country um there's i mean there's a lots of nightmare stories of people who um who have left the country can't get back in and the sad thing is is that if you don't have a lawyer and um, there was another one i was watching this girl was fortunate she was from ghana she came to the uk when she was eight years old they faffed around with her application for indefinite leave to remain until she was 18. can you imagine so she was 18 and then when she reached 18 they're telling her that she's going to be deported you know they took her as far as um she had a, a flight number to get onto the plane and she prayed she prayed she prayed because she was another person that was in the country legitimately both her parents were settled i don't know how they claimed that she should be deported i don't know how but like I said, if she didn't have the money to pay a lawyer to fight for her, and she had one lawyer, and that lawyer ripped them off. You know, when I say ripped them off, they weren't meeting the deadlines. They weren't submitting papers and documents that they were supposed to. While the family thought that everything was going through okay, the lawyer wasn't doing their job. So that is another reason why um, they came after her, because when they thought things were processing, it wasn't. So make sure you're following up don't take it for granted that you're leaving it in the lawyer's hands and everything's okay if you haven't heard a response within a reasonable time or what you consider a reasonable time based on the time frame given on the www.gov.uk website you follow up and ask what's going on find out from the lawyer ask for copies they should be giving you copies of all the letters they're sending anyway so don't just sit back and wait for things Think that things are going okay when and when maybe they're not that's why i said always make sure that the lawyer is registered don't look for a cheap deal cheapness ends up the dearest look for a decent credible lawyer and some of the lawyers they don't have to um be expensive you know i i have a couple of um immigration lawyers that i feel could be a re more reasonable and I, I believe are authentic I'm not gonna say I recommend them because that's you know I've never used them but I just thought I would let you know that anyway as usual you can contact me on blackbrightnews at gmail.com um, always subscribe to my channel share my channel and let people know what's going on because you know it could happen to anyone don't think i mean these two girls they were professionals they weren't no look on dibby dibby people they were professionals and you know so don't think that because it's a certain type of person they're looking for or you have to look a certain way you don't it could happen to anyone so i thought i'd throw that out there just to give you an idea of what you can expect and so you cover your back so you're well prepared if you do have to leave the country make sure you are well documented and you stand correct if you've if you've overstayed or if you've done anything dodgy 
I wouldn't even leave the country if I were you, because you will not get back in if they can help it, unless by the grace of God, there go I. That's all for now. Bye-bye.